All right, in this lesson, uh, we're going to get into trigonometric functions. We're going to move into a new part of the course uh, and look at angles as rotations uh, to start off here. Uh, everyone knows what an angle is. You, you learned angles in geometry, and this is where this is the connection to geometry. Uh, it, but I want you to know, and I think if you look at this picture here, you'll notice, you know, this angle right here drawn, and, and I'm labeling this as a 54 degree angle. That's given to you, okay? So this is a 54 degree angle. Obviously, everyone knows that if I if I did this, don't do this on your paper. If I did this, that's a 90 degree angle, okay? So it makes sense that about half of that, a little more than half, okay? If a little bit more than half of that would be about 54. All right, so everyone understands that, hopefully, um, or hope you, hopefully you understand that. So this is a 54-degree angle. Now, when we're, when we're talking about angles as rotations, every angle starts in a certain spot, okay, Cert certain place. Every angle is going to start on what's called the initial side. Initial means starting side. And that's going to be along the x-axis. So basically pointing, pointing to the right. If I just draw this and nothing else, if I just draw this and nothing else, that is a zero degree angle. So if I do this, that is a zero degree angle. I think everyone knows that this is a 90. We just talked about that. A 180 would be this. So right along the x-axis, if we, if you, this is the origin, and you're pointing this way and pointing this way, that's a 180 degree rotation. It's halfway around. If you go all the way around, it's 360. And that's what this is all based on. Okay, this is all based on a 360 and half of a circle being 180. So we have what's called the terminal side of an angle. Here is the terminal side of a 54 degree angle. Notice how the angle starts here, starts on the x-axis, and rotates around counterclockwise. And that's what all this stuff says right here. I'm just summarizing what it says in here. I'm not going to read this word for word. All right, But basically, you have what's called the initial side and the terminal side of an angle. All right, And the terminal side, wherever the terminal side at is, that's whatever quadrant it ends up in, that's what kind of angle it is. So if you have an angle that ends up between 0 and 90, it's considered a first quadrant angle because this is quadrant 1, this is quadrant 2, here's quadrant 3, and here's quadrant 4. If you don't know that already, make sure you write that down. All right. If an angle terminates in quadrant 1, it's a quadrant 1 angle. If an angle terminates in quadrant 2, it's a quadrant 2 angle, so on and so forth. All right, so that's what it says right here. If the angle terminates on the axis in between the quadrants, for example, 180, right? 180, 180 starts here, and it would rotate around, and it would stop right there, and that's a 180-degree angle. But see how it terminates? It ends right on the y-axis. I'm sorry, right on the x-axis. That's considered a quadrantal angle, okay? 90, 180, 270, and 360 are considered quadrantal angles. Also, you can keep going. You can go more than 360. If you go around and then keep going, that's 360. If you go 90 more, that's 450. If you go 90 more, it's 540. If you go 90 more, it's 630. And if you go 90 more, it's 720. So what I just did here is I drew a 720 degree angle. Okay? 720 degree angle would would terminate in the same spot a 360 would. 360 is all the way around one time, 720 is all the way around twice. Now, positive rotations, positive angles rotate counterclockwise just like I've been doing. I haven't done a negative angle yet. A negative angle rotates clockwise. So it's the same exact starting spot. I want to do it over here. Same exact starting spot. We start right here is the initial side, but if I want to do it, if I want to draw a negative angle, I go clockwise. So that's negative 90 right there. That's a negative 90 degree angle. See the blue? 
that would be a negative 90 degree angle with the little arrow showing that that's the direction you went in. And we're going to practice this, obviously. So here we go. Now here's a little, uh, a little activity here, and we'd have to, if you have your computer and you can go to that, uh, you can go to this math, this, type this in your uh, web address and take a look, and you can, you can uh, try that out for yourself, okay? But I don't want to do that on the video here because that's something you could do on your own. You could just see as the angles rotate. Um, so anyways, what I want to do here is I'd like to draw, start drawing these angles. So again, every angle is going to start at zero. So there's my, I'm going to put all my initial sides in here before I even do anything. All my angles start in the same spot by definition. All right. So now 200, what do I do? Well, just pick anywhere on here, just kind of close to the middle, and we're going to rotate. So there's 90. If I stop there, it's 90. I don't want to stop there. I want to go to 200. All right, so I'm going to keep going. Okay, if I stop there, it's 180, but I want to go to 200, so I can go a little bit more than the 180, which is about 20 more. So we're just estimating. We're sketching here. We're going to go a little bit more. Is that about 20 degrees more than 180? Looks like it. So that is 200 right there. That's a 200 degree angle. Put a little arrow at the end of your rotation. Negative 190. So we got to go clockwise. There's negative 90. There's negative 180. And a little bit more. It's going to end up in quadrant 2. That should be straight. It's just hard for me to draw on this thing. Right about there. And put a little arrow to show the direction you went in. And that's a negative 190 degree angle. How about 520? All right, 90, 180, 270, 360, 450. Now I don't want to go all the way to the next one because that's going to be 540. So I got to stop before that, right about there. And that's going to be 520. And then negative 410. 90, negative 180, negative 270, negative 360, and then another 50 is going to bring you to right about there. I think I went a little bit too far, not purposely. All right, and that is a negative 410. So hopefully you understand that. Now, coterminal angles. What we're going to do to, to figure out what that means is we're going to draw these two angles, 60 and 420, one on each of these. Okay, so we're going to draw 60, just like we just did. So 60 is like that, right? There's a 60, two thirds of the way to 90. Okay, 420, let's draw a 420. Well, here's 90, 180, 270, 360, and I wanna go another 60 right there. So take a look at the two angles I just drew. I drew a 60 and a 420. This one's a 60 and this one's a 420. Okay? What do you notice about those two angles? Take away the spiral. Take away the spirals, right? They're the exact same angle. Why? Because all we did to get a 420, you just got to go around the circle one more time. If you just go from here and you go boop like that, go around a full circle, you get in the exact same spot. What's 420 take away 60? 420 take away 60 is 360. So if there's a difference of 360, it's just a full rotation, one full rotation around the circle. It's like just going around again one time, okay? They're going to look exactly the same. They're going to end up, they're going to terminate in the same position. Co-terminal. They share, co means to share, a terminal side. So 60 and 420 share, they share a terminal side. Therefore, they are co-terminal. You can get co-terminal angles by simply adding 360 or subtracting 360. And that's what I've done here. 460, 820, 1180, 1540. All I did is add 360, add 360, add 360. Or 
take away 360, take away 360, take away 360. If you just keep adding or subtracting 360, you have all, all those angles are going to be coterminal. All right, so here's some examples of that. If I have 380 and I want to get between 0 and 360, I just got to subtract 360. 380 minus 360 is 20. 20 and 380, 20 and 380 are going to be coterminal. If you draw them, they will look exactly the same other than the spiral going around one more time. All right? So 20 and 380 are coterminal. 970, okay, subtract 360. I get 610. Okay, 610 and 970 are coterminal because I just subtracted 360 from it. But 610 is not between 0 and 360, so I got to do it again. Subtract 360. And that's 250. Okay, so 250 and 970 are coterminal. Negative 60. Well, I don't want to subtract 360 because I'm not going to be able to get positive. Again, I want all my answers to be between 0 and 360. Between 0 and 360. Negative 60 is not. So I'm going to add 360 because that's still coterminal. Adding or subtracting at 360, it doesn't matter. It's still one time around. You just go the opposite way, right? 360 minus 60 is 300. So 300 and negative 60 are coterminal. What did this one say? Negative 450, I had to add 360. Negative 450 plus 360 is negative 90. And then uh, we're gonna take, we're gonna take negative 90 and add 360 again. And we're gonna get 270. So 270, you got to add 360 twice because you got to get between 0 and 360. This one here, take away 360, I'm at 700. Take away 360 again, and I'm at 340. So 340 and 1060 are the exact same angle. Last part here, reference angles. And we're going to talk more about reference angles in class tomorrow. Reference angles are how far away from the x-axis you are basically so if you're in the first quadrant the reference angle is 30. it's just a, it's got to be an acute angle think of acute okay reference angles have to be acute you want to take the angle back to uh between zero and uh, between zero and 90. so for 150 the reference angle because 150 is a quadrant two angle the reference angle is 30. why because how far do you have to go to get to that uh, to get to that x-axis so right there the reference angle would be 30 if you were in the third quadrant you had 210 210 is how far past 180 how far past 180 are you well it's 30 degrees past 180 so therefore the reference angle would be 30 in the fourth quadrant if I have a 330 which is a fourth quadrant angle that would be that angle right there that's the same as a 30 degree angle, okay? Because that's the leftover, that's with the leftover angle in order to get back to the x axis. So the leftover angle in order to get back to the x axis is your reference angle. So here we go. Here's a 340. You'll see this better when we do it. Here's a 340. We're going to draw a 340. 340 is going to be here all the way to there, right? There's a 340 right there, kind of. Okay, there's a 340. What's the, what is this angle right here to get to the x-axis, to get back to zero, basically? Okay, what is this angle right here? This is your reference angle. Well, if this is 340, how far do you have to go to get back to 360, to get to 360, which is essentially zero? All right, well, that's going to be 20. How did you figure it out? You do 360 minus 340. So if you're in the fourth quadrant, you just do 360 minus whatever the angle is, and you're going to get your reference angle. Now, we haven't done anything with that reference angles yet, so you don't even understand what they're for, but we're going to get to it, and, and we're going to use them in another lesson. 160. Okay, 160. Let's draw 160. Here's, here's a 160. That's a 160 because it's 90 plus another plus another uh, 70, right? Well, what's left over? What's this leftover piece right here? That's my reference angle. What's my leftover piece? That's, while this is 160, the leftover piece must be 20 because it's 180, right? Half a circle is 180. 
So if you're in the second quadrant, you're just going to do 180 minus the angle they give you, and that's going to give you your reference angle of 20. So there's two ways to do it. You can do it by graphing it, or you can do it by subtracting. And last one, 260. 260 is this. 260 is right there. And again, we're going to take it back to the x-axis, so my reference angle is right here. Saved by the bell. My reference angle is right here. And so my reference angle is how far past the x-axis did I go? Well, 180 went to 260, so that is 80 degrees past the, uh, past the x-axis. So that's going to be, how would you figure that out? You would do 260 minus 180. So when you're in the third quadrant, it's subtracting 180. Okay, and you get that reference angle of 80. All right. Now, again, I went fast through the reference angle. It's really going to take some practice to get that and what the use of it is. I know that may not make sense to you right now, but I think we'll get it better when we actually work on it. I'll see you in class to work on these uh, co-terminal angles and reference angles. See you then.